welcome in a time of global pandemic. But fab doesn't wait for anyone. So lots to talk about. Um, clearly everyone's impacted by coronavirus. Uh, stay safe, stay healthy. Uh, I've, I've learned to not ask, how are you? But I ask, I hope you're not terrible as we all weather this. So a couple notes on coronavirus. Many people want to help. Many labs want to help. Um, narrowly self-interest and beyond that community interest and planetary interest. How can we help with coronavirus? I do want to caution you though that a lot of the fab labs can make respirators, uh, things like that have been naive. You need to be careful about where our help really has an impact on the medical needs. So um, I reached out and got in touch and eventually um, found uh, initially the U.S. experts, academic and industrial and respiratory health, and then their international partners. Um, this is a link to a video we did yesterday. It, it's not a great recording, but it was a conversation with them. They really cautioned that even if you could make a ventilator, a bad ventilator is worse than no ventilator. And for most of the need, it's not ventilators, it's before the ventilators. And so they cautioned against going all in on making ventilators. Um, there's a bunch of things they really need help with. So one is um, testing alternate filter media, which really needs looking at nanostructures, um, so specialized tools. Um, building not just masks, but cartridges for airflow. Um, protective equipment for frontline medical workers. Um, uh, CPAP. Uh, CPAP is used for things like sleep apnea, but with oxygen can help for a wide range of the coronavirus cases. Um, and those look easier to make and are in a more immediate need. Um, and emerging practice is to use them with helmets for long-term use. There aren't yet good supplies of these. Um, for coronavirus, the CPAPs need instrumentation to measure the total, what they call tidal volume. These are the kinds of projects they're saying they need, they do really need urgent help with now. And so one note is there are, I've seen tens of projects and projects with hundreds of people. We really need to coordinate so they're effective. Um, this group of advisors I've put together isn't rate limiting. You should bring in whatever expertise you have access to, but let's use this group to share projects and use this project to track who, who's doing what. And then the issue tracker has nothing in it. Use these issue trackers to coordinate uh, best practice. And what I expect happening is uh, prototyping solutions. Some of them need really specialized equipment. This links to a project I'm running in the lab at MIT where we can use things like electron microscopes to look at nanoparticles or um, EDMs for tooling. Uh, but as, as solutions get prototyped and get validated, we can start tapping the Fab Lab network to develop and scale and really go global quickly. Um, this will really be a day by day response. But let's start using this group and project to coordinate the Fab Lab uh, network response. I think we can have a big impact. In the call yesterday, the experts were really concerned about the ability of industry to respond. It hadn't really thought about how op open fabrication can get around limits in industrial production. Um, so we need to make sure we help and don't hurt, but there's a big opportunity to do that. So that's how we can directly respond to coronavirus. Uh, one of my favorite project management statements, uh, um, this was the IBM, manager of the IBM 360 has a great book on project management. And in it, he says, a pregnancy takes nine months, no matter how many people you assign to it. Meaning some tasks, just there's the amount of time you need to do and it's not a matter of effort. And so just the point is, there's a limit to how many people can do any one task and how often we, we can meet. We just, we need to progress. And so let's meet as we need, let's pull in people as we need. Um, but 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 work smartly